Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to part three of the Slither.io tutorial series. So far, we have a pretty cool game. As you can see, we have this snake that follows around. We can change the speed by clicking down and we have a length variable implemented as well. So pretty cool stuff as well as the gray background. And the first thing we want to do is create a way so that if the snake is longer and if the user has a longer snake, it's also bigger because you don't want a super long snake uh, that's super thin. That would just look odd. So it's actually pretty easy to implement this. What we're going to do is go into looks, drag in a set size to, then we're going to go into operators, drag in a plus, and drag in a divided by. So here we're going to have two, here we're going to have 75, and as you may guess, we're going to have our newly created variable length right here. So then what you want to do is apply the same logic to uh, our main clone. So not just the clones, but our main snake head. So we're going to drag in a when flag is clicked forever and let's set size to this. Uh, so as you can see, when we start out, it's actually pretty big. Uh, but as we go along, we get it to become smaller and smaller. And you can see that if we just click green flag, it pops up a little bit bigger. So we know that that is working. Really quickly, let's add a block that makes sure that when we start, our main clone is set to the snake head costume. So we don't want to switch that up on accident. Um, and the next thing we want to do is create a way for a pulsing and glowing effect for our snake body. So right now it's just a single color. Uh, it's not dynamic. It doesn't really look cool. So we're going to change that. So the first thing we want to do is create a new variable. We're going to make sure this is for this sprite only. That's really important here. And we're going to call it clone brightness. So once we have that, we're going to create a pretty short script when flag is clicked uh, forever. And we're actually going to drag in a couple repeats. So you can just drag in one and we can duplicate it. We're going to set clone brightness. So this is going to control the brightness of each individual clone in the body. And we can kind of play with it uh, and change it up and down so that you get this kind of pulsing and glowing effect that you see in the original game. So we're going to say repeat 30 times, just uh, a random number. And uh, you guys should keep it to 30. I found that that works pretty well. We're going to change clone brightness by one. And then we're going to repeat 30, change it by negative two, and then repeat 30 again and change it by positive two. So you want to make sure that you have your repeat 30 times, change clone brightness by one underneath this. Then we're going to drag in a forever. And inside of that, you want to put the negative two and the two. So first it'll go to 30, then it'll come to negative 30, then back to 30, negative 30, uh, just kind of cycling through those different clone brightnesses. So as you can see, if we see clone brightness, it goes up to 30, down to 30. Um, so the next thing we want to do is implement this. So in our uh, when I start as clone logic, we're going to drag in a set brightness to and we're going to set the brightness to, as you may expect, uh, clone brightness. And this will have a pretty cool effect on our snake. You can see that now it's pulsing. Uh, it goes dark and it goes light and it has a cooler effect to it. If we speed up, it still works and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, so the next thing we want to do is smooth up our snake. So right now, if I show you, if I go, let's restart, I can do this kind of thing, and it looks really janky. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty harsh. So we kind of want to fix that and make it so that it's more smooth of an experience. Because in reality, a snake shouldn't be able to look down and look up right after. It's a little bit weird. So we're going to implement two new variables. Let's go to our backdrop. And we're going to call these cam x, standing for camera, and cam y. We're going to drag in a when flag is click. We want to set both of these to zero. And then what we want to do is drag in a forever. And we're going to change camera X 
by something. So what's going to happen is we're basically just going to have it lag behind our actual player X. And that kind of creates a smooth effect for our user, which is really cool, and you'll get to see that. So what we're going to do is drag in a divided by. And for now, we're going to put 20 on the right side, but we're going to change that later. And then we're going to drag in a minus. And we're going to have cam X on the right side and player X on the left side. Whoops. Let's duplicate this little chunk, change this to cam Y, change this to player Y, and change this to cam Y. So make sure you have those configured correctly, otherwise the game will kind of glitch out. So what this is doing is it's kind of just lagging behind player X. So the next thing we want to do is go back into our sprite one. And in here, let's change it so that the clone follows camera X, not player X, because we want it to be smooth. So we're just going to change this to clone X. If we can just right click and do so, or sorry, cam X. And then here we want to change that to cam Y, which are the new uh, variables that we just created. However, we actually also want our main sprite, our uh, head, our, our snake head to follow that as well. So we're going to drag in a very similar block. So you can duplicate. Let's drag this underneath. And instead of having clone X, as you may guess, we're going to have player X because this is the head. So let's see if this works. As you can see, uh, it has this cool lag effect where if I speed up, it goes to the uh, top and it goes to the very right. But then if I let go, it kind of adjusts. So this is where I said we're going to change that number from 20 to something a little bit smaller. I like to use five. And this way, we will have a lagging uh, camera effect that really makes it uh, a really cool experience for the user. And I really enjoy this. So instead of the snake head always being in the middle, kind of moves up, down, right, left uh, to adapt to which direction you're pointing to. And if you let go, then it kind of goes back a little bit. So I think that's a really cool effect. There's some cool visual effects we added this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you very soon with the next part for the Slither.io tutorial series. And thanks for watching. Peace out, guys.